In this tutorial, I'm going to cover how to make a 2D image into a 3D movie, okay? And I have rendered out two different films here. This is using a one-node camera, and this one is with a two-node camera. And the difference is, if you can see here, if we zoom back out here on this one here, we'll go back to the beginning here, is that this is a little bit more out of focus. Well, it should be. It's a, because I actually played with depth of field, okay? And so as we zoom in, there's going to be certain things that become more out of focus than others, okay? And that's the difference with the, between a 2D, uh, a two-node, and a one-node, is there's a lot more control. There's a lot more things you do with a two-node camera. Although I kind of almost like the one-node because I don't have to deal with depth of field, you know, it keeps everything very clear. It depends on what you want to do with your project when you we, when you get to it, okay? So let's just continue on, okay? Now, you're going to need to download this file right here. I'll close this right here. Uh, this is Stonehenge. It'll be in your D2L class. And I want you to take a look at this for a second. We'll go to image and image size just to see what size this is. I actually have a 300 pixel per inch file because we're going to be zooming in. And the width is six inches, and the height's about four and a quarter. Now, of course, you know if I if I wanted to make a vertical movie, I, you know those could have been swapped. But I'm making a a horizontal landscape movie. Um, the other thing too is I could make this larger, but I just wanted to it to run smoothly in After Effects because the larger the file, the the longer it takes to process, and depending upon the computer you're working on, um, you know, it could take a lot longer. So that's why I have it as a six by four and a quarter, although my computer will pretty much handle this pretty well. So anyway, let's continue on. Now, if you take a look at the layers, how they're situated here, I've got these stones set up, and under each of these stones, I have a shadow layer, okay? And... You know, the shadows kind of add a little bit more depth to it. But I had tried putting these shadows with their stones into groups. And when I went over into After Effects to make them into 3D and then try to play with the camera as they went in, nothing was happening. Okay? So in order to have this effect happening, we cannot group our layers. All right? Um, at least for what we're trying to do with this project. Okay? And you can could, you could play around with that a bit yourself because, mind you, this is all trial and error. This is how I learned this stuff, okay? So let's continue on. You want to you wanna download this file. You want to make a folder for it because that's key. Some people in the class are having trouble, you know, file managing. And after this point in time, you may have learned this, but I'm just covering this just again because it's so key, especially on a PC. Now, on a Mac, it's a little different. I had actually done one of these, and I just sort of left my folder, my my uh, Photoshop file out on the desktop, and then I started After Effects, and I just saved it on the desktop too. And then later I put them into a folder, and it worked. You know, I, I can't explain that, but Macs are much, you know, works a, work a lot better like that. Um, PCs, they're not so forgiving, you know, and I don't know quite what to do to fix it, okay? So I just want to point that out. That's why we need to actually put this into a folder and then when we do it the and then when we work in after effects and save our after effects file we'll save it in the same folder and we can take that with us okay so let's continue on here um so what i'm going to need to do is i've got this one loaded up already but we're going to go to new and we've done this before new project all right we don't need to save that one we'll go to new composition we'll find it all right. Now you can name your folder, you know, 3D exercise if you want to, um, or put your name on it, whatever you want to. Let's let's select that and then go to Import as Composition Retain Layer Sizes, and go to Open, and then Editable Layer Styles. Yes. So we've done all this before. Now let's go over here to Stonehenge Composition in the, in the Project uh, panel and double click it. And then, as you can see, all of our layers pop up. Now, one of the things we're going to need to do is we're going to need to click on these 3D switches here. Now, in case you don't see your 3D switches, you may need to toggle your switches mode, okay? Because you can actually hide certain ones, and I just want to point that out, because in case 
you have it set up like this and you can't you have no 3d switches just make sure you come down here to where it says toggle switches okay now first thing we're going to do is we're going to come down here and we're going to click down this whole row here and make it all 3d now we don't see anything happening until we actually click on a layer and then you'll see this right here which i'll explain more in just a moment okay now Next thing we want to do is, on the top layer, that's one of the reasons I'm clicking on this, we want to click the top layer here, and we want to go to Layer New, and we're going to create a camera. Okay, so there's a lot of different camera presets, and for this uh, tutorial, I'm using 50 millimeter. okay? And if you play around with it, like if you do like a 20 millimeter, and just take a look at the zoom and the angle uh, of view here, okay? And let's just take a look here it changes okay and you know maybe I might want to do a 15 millimeter or 35 millimeter okay but anyway I'm going to do 50 for this one right now because it seemed to work the last time and we're not going to click anything else here um, so this is set for 36 uh, millimeters for film size 50 millimeters for focal length we, we're using a one node camera okay first of all and then let's go and create that. Now, what this camera will allow us to do is it'll allow us to zoom in and see the 3D effect once we get that going. We'll do that in just a moment, okay? So let's come down here. Well, first of all, before I do anything, let's go and, and bring up another view here. So over here, under you'll see this, this one view. Select view layout. We want two views. So now it will show us this 3D view and we'll zoom out a little bit. So basically, you know, that's going to be the, our, that's our camera here. Okay. And these are our layers more or less. And so our layers right now are all stacked together and we're looking at from the top. Okay. And what we're going to do is I'm going to go down to the sky layer here and press the P key. And I'm going to go over here. This is our X, this is our Y, and this is our Z axis, okay? And I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly there, okay? So what I'm doing is I'm just scrolling this over towards the right. And as you can see, on both screens there, on both windows, uh, what's happening is this sky is going way far back, and that's fine, okay? And that's how it gives us our 3D distance. Now, fortunately, the skies, you know, it's just got a gradient and a couple of specs or a few specs for stars. So we're going to need to enlarge the sky now, okay? So I'm going to go and hit, click on the sky layer, click Shift S. So we br toggle and bring up, or not toggle, but bring up our scale and we'll enlarge our sky. Now, you can actually make your sky a bit larger because in case we rotate, when we get into the uh, film later or we get into uh, the scene more and we zoom in and we, we can rotate a little bit, um, we want to be able to see, we don't want to be able to see, you know, this, where we see black out there, okay? So that's one of the reasons I'm making the sky just a little larger there, okay? Let me undo that. Now, let's continue on. So that's our sky. Now we're going to do our clouds, and we hit the P key, so we can bring that up. We come over here to the Z axis, and we're going to scroll that back almost. Well, we don't need to go all the way, but I'm going to go back so far here. And we're then we're going to do Shift S and scale this up. And we're going to do one more thing here. Right now, under our views here... Um, well, actually, in order to get over to this one, we got to click on this screen here. Okay, so now we're in this screen, and we can see where top. We can see top because you couldn't see it here. Okay, it says active camera here. When you go over here, you see top because that's the view we're looking at. We want to change this to left or right, so we're seeing it from the side. Because what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to rotate this, and I'm going to rotate it so that. And that's not what I want to do here. Uh, we could actually rotate a couple of ways. One way is is just to click up here. Make sure we're using this selection tool. And we'll just rotate it this way. 
So now, if you take a look at the screen there, over there, because this is key, you're seeing that our sky is actually, um, it's, you know, is distorted so that the clouds on the top are closest to us, as if it's in a real uh, 3D situation with a real, like we're standing outside, because if we're standing outside looking at this, this was what would be happening, is those clouds on top would be the closest to us, and those in the back would be further away. So we can actually get this effect very easily, all right? And I'm going to actually push back my sky just a little bit more because because this all takes a little bit of juggling here. So I'm going back and forth with our layers So because I want to bring this sky back a little bit more and we'll scale it up just more here, okay? And then we're going to take our clouds and bring them back a little bit more like this, okay? And... We'll just raise them up too. So I'm going to move them up here just a little bit, so they're not. We don't see where they get cut off at. Okay. Now that's a kind of a nice view there. Okay. Now let's continue on, and what we're going to do is we're going to go to the background layer. Background layer, we hit the P key, and then we sh move this back here. All right. As you can see, I'm doing this. I'm looking at both of those screens there, and we don't want to go too far. We don't have to go back to the clouds entirely, but we're going to definitely need to enlarge. So let's go and hit the Shift S and bring up our scale, and we're going to make the background larger, okay? Just like that. Now, let's get into where the grass is at. So this is the foreground grass. And the foreground grass, we're going to hit the P key on it, okay? I, um, and then we're going to send it back in space like by doing this as you can see where I'm scrolling here and I'm look if you look at your other screen okay now one of the things we're going to do with this and the reason I'm so far zoomed out on this is so that you know we can see this better here is we're going to rote we're going to do the same rotation here that we did with the sky but a little differently we're going to we're going to distort it this way okay now I have tried to make it all the way flat like a ground could be, but it just doesn't work because of where the location is, you know. And th I'm going to give you a link to another video for our project that shows you uh, uh, someone doing this with the ground. But the ground is set down lower, and it worked very well with him doing that. So I'm just going to leave this at an angle like this. And it's I'm going to turn off these other stones right now we're going to turn off all this stuff so we can see better here okay keep our camera on now one of the things i want to do with this is we don't want to cut into because the further back we go you see that it's going behind that background layer okay we don't want that to happen so and and want to take a look at this and that's why I have it set to the left. We don't want to bypass. We don't want to go past that. All right. So let's make our ground larger, or grass that is, and we'll hit Shift S, and we're going to scale it up like this. Okay, and we're, we'll scale it this way, but also we can uncheck it and scale it so it comes more like this. Okay, so I'm sort of distorting it a little bit. There we go. Now, if we zoom in on this to take a look here. Our sky, I mean our, our grass, I apologize, is sort of leaning inward, the blades. And it's a distortion caused because we, you know, of how we're, we're, uh, we've rotated this. We're going to actually change this so that the grass doesn't get so distorted. And the easiest way to do that, and let me just bring this down a little bit so we can see better. And... I can't zoom out too far. Whoops. Bring my timeline indicator back. Yeah, I'm going to just have to keep it there for the moment. because I apologize. Uh, but anyway, let me continue on here. Over here in your effects and presets, click on the search. Okay, so bring up your effects and presets over here. And look for um, corner. And it'll bring up corner pin. And we'll double click on it. Now, what this will do is this will actually set our corners for us for the front, okay? So we got lower left and lower right. 
So we're going to click this little targeting here and come down here. And we're going to click the corner of the screen right there, okay? And you can see it changes it. We'll do the same thing with the right side, okay? Now, and do it right there. Now, in case you're you start to see your grass, and let's scroll down here. In case you start to, when you do this, if you see your grass, um, you know, I'll uh, click the little chain there so it's in proportion. In case you, you do this and we and we see part of the background there, you want to scale this grass up again, okay? So this has happened to me a lot, but this time the grass did not get uh, cr cropped in on. So now we've got this happening, okay? And as you can see, I'm sort of having it to play with this a little bit because, you know, I've got a situation where it is crossing this. It's not getting cut off. But it happened when I used those corner pins. So I want to kind of bring that. We, we could probably do it to about maybe right here. Okay. And we could scrub this down just a little bit. This is all takes a little playing with, okay. And we'll uncheck that, and then we'll make this wider here a little bit. And then we'll scrub this down this way. And it's still crossing it, but it's not getting cut off, okay? That's the main thing. We don't want it to get cut off. Um, and, it, you know, this just takes some tinkering. This is what takes so long with this. Uh, because these are kind of crossing each other, but, but if I continue on back further... It will eventually get caught, cut in there. It's not getting cut off yet. So maybe about right there. You just got to play around with it, okay? All right. That's, that's better. And we can actually kind of try to raise this up just a little bit more and bring this down a little bit more. And it's still crossing over. You know, it's doing this weird thing here. But, you know, we can always go back down to here. And this is what takes so long with doing this is we can bring the sky back further again, okay? And we'll zoom, and then we can bring the clouds a little back. We can't go too far back because what happens here, but we can scale it up. Let's do some scaling up here. And then we'll go back to the background. We'll push it back a little bit more. Okay, so now we're, we're getting a lot more distance here. We're getting less of this crossing over. I'm just going to leave this. All right. So this this doesn't look too bad, but let's let's zoom in on this, and then let's use our dolly here to zoom in, and you'll see a little bit distortion there happening. Well, it's taking its time there because, but you can see a little bit, and let's move up here. You'll see it more. I'm hoping you would. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, I definitely see it with the stars because there's a definite difference between where the stars are at and the clouds, okay? And they just shift just barely, but you can see the difference there, okay? Undo that, okay? Anytime I use my dolly, I undo it. Uh, so we bring it all the way out here. Um, I'm just playing around here. Trying to get this right. Uh, we can actually zoom out. We'll leave it like that. Okay. Now let's get let's go on to the background uh, back stones in the middle. That's these right here. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I hit the P key, and we're going to move them back. Okay. And they're going to go back quite a bit, and we'll have to scale them up, and we'll have to reposition them a little bit. But we could take them to about right there, maybe. Yeah, okay, that's got some distance on it. And then let's go and hit Shift-S and scale them up a little bit. There we go. Now, if we go too far and they start cutting in, then look what happens. Okay, let's zoom in on this so you can see this. So if I, if I scale them up too much, they're going to get cropped off weird, okay? And we don't want that to happen. So maybe something about right there, because you could kind of see if it if it cuts down into this grass layer that's slanted. 
All right, so that's nice. We can do that. Now let's go into the back stones. We're going to hit the P key on this. And we're going to send this back. Whoops. Be nice to see it, so we'll just have to zoom out here. Uh, we're going to send that back close to the other layer here. Okay. Maybe, maybe like this. And I'm looking at this screen right here that I'm pointing at. Notice this, okay? And I'm not looking at this yet. So I'm going to go to Shift S for scale to bring up the scale, and then we're going to enlarge it, and it'll bring it. It'll make it look like it's coming towards us, but really it's just scaling that up. Okay. Now, and we're going to use the dolly here in just a second. Let's bring up these. Now here's the deal: the ones that I have shadows with, I want to try to manage my layers better so I can under so I can find them a little quicker. So what I'm going to do is for each of these layers that have a shadow, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I'm going to select both of them, and then I'm going to come over here to this little uh, rectangle, this square here, and we're going to change its color. We're going to right-click it, and we'll change this one to, I don't know, we'll change it to cyan, okay? Um, we'll go up to the next layer. We'll turn those on for a second, and we'll... Click both of those, select both of those. I hold another shift key. We'll click on one of the rectangles here and we'll change this to maybe, I don't know, orange, just something a different color. As you can see, it's it's making these different colors in the in the timeline too, which helps a lot. Because it'll be easier to find them. Okay. We'll maybe do this one purple. Uh, go up to the next one here. And there's something else we're gonna do here too in just a second. Uh, but I want to change these colors first. All right, so that can be green. Oops, I didn't get this one. Turn this one to green because I didn't select both of them. All right, so let me get this and select both of these layers. Oops, click off here. Hold down my shift key, get these two layers together, and or select both of them, and then we'll use, I don't know, lavender maybe. We just want a different color. Lavender is too close to the other stuff. So, so let's come over here and let's do uh, seafoam. That's a little different, okay? And then for the top layer here, let's turn these two on. These are the front stones and the shadows. And we can't see anything because I accidentally clicked off that. So I went back over here and clicked on composition in the composition window. Um, so let's go over here and change this to, um, I don't know, yellow. Just so we have different colors. So it'll help us find these better. Now, the other thing I want to do too is this. For each of the shadows... I'm going to parent them, take the parent pick whip, and parent it to the layer above it. So they'll go to the next shadow layer. We'll do the same thing here to the layer above it. So we can, so we won't have to change the position of, of both. We can do one at, you know, we can do the stones and not have to change the position of the shadow because the shadow will just follow it. Okay. This will make our job a lot easier with all these layers. Okay, now let's turn off the layers we don't need here. We've got these middle stones left, and they need to be brought back. So let's hit the P key, and we'll bring those back close to what's here because this can be this far back. And we're going to need to adjust our dolly, too, in just a second. Actually, we could do that now. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit more here with our dolly okay um anyway let me come over here we're, we're going to hit the on the middle stone left layer we're going to hit shift s so we can bring up our scale and we're going to scale these up and we're going to have to obviously move them too okay um so we'll move these over a little bit and you see where i'm i'm touching this at and so I'm going to move this x-axis over like this, okay? And then we can actually reposition if need to be, okay? So let's bring this, whoops, didn't want, we got to use this tool, the direct selection tool. We can bring it down just a little bit. Maybe they're like that. Okay, we can. Now let's let's use this dolly now and see what it looks like, what we're doing here. And you can see a lot more distortion 
going on that, at parallaxing, especially with the background now, okay? So we've got a lot more distance happening. And I'm just going to undo what I did with the dolly because it'll make it easier. And just situate that. Okay, now, let's see here. Oh, I, I can also do this to adjust to, this will make it easier. So we can zoom out. See, how, there's different, th this I'm, I'm playing with not the direct selection tool, but I'm playing with, these are the for the camera, okay? And so I, I just move that down a little bit. I'm going to push it out more so we can see more of it. Okay, there we go. That's not bad. Now. Let's continue on. We got the middle stone on the right. We'll reveal it and with its shadow. And then we'll hit the P key and move it back. And we want it a little in front of the others. Not much. And then let's go and hit Shift S and scale it. Okay. And then let's go to the next one, okay? Let's go to the middle stones here and hit the P key. You know, we got to be on the middle stones later, layer and hit the P key. We don't need to do that for the shadow because the shadow is now linked to it. And we're going to push this back pretty close, but not. it's still going to be in front. Now, mind you, what I'm looking at, I'm looking at this over here, okay? And that is key. And then what I'm going to do is we're going to obviously have to raise this just a little bit because it's actually cutting in. I can see that with the shadow there. Um, we could do one thing here. We could we could maybe bring it a little. Yeah, see that? It gets cut off there. Maybe we have it like that. That's not bad. I like that position. All right. And then we'll just scale it up just a little bit. Shift S. Bring it. Pulls up our scale here. And we'll just... Now, the thing is, the reason it's doing this, if you look, I'm looking at the shadow here, how it's getting cut off. I know it's a little hard to see, but let's zoom in here so we can try to see this better. But if you see this, see that shadow's getting cut off? And that's because we're too far, we're cutting into the grass layer. All right, so let's bring this back up here. We'll zoom out just a little bit more. And we've just got to position this better. Um, so we don't go back so far. Or, you know, maybe, maybe about right there. Okay. So we're going to have some distance there. We can also affecting how much it's scaled will we'll change that too. All right, now let's continue on here. Um, and we may need to make a, more adjustments as we go along. It's just there's a lot to, to take into account here. Um, these background stones, these three stones on the second front level, uh, hit the P key on that, and then move them back just a little bit to here, okay? And then we'll scale those up just a little bit, Shift S, and we don't need to scale them up much. I think we, you know, maybe to that. Right I'm just playing around here, okay? So. Now, we got the front shadow, or the front stones on the left here, okay? And we're going to just take them back just a little bit. Hit the P key and just take those back ever so slightly there, okay? And then um, we're going to have to just scale it up just a little bit here. So Shift S, and... I'm looking at the shadow so to make sure the shadow state is not getting show, doesn't show how it gets cropped there. Okay, so that's better there. And then we got one last one here. Okay, We've got these front stones. We'll hit the P key on that layer, and then we'll just shift those just a little back here. Okay, and if we want to, we can scale them up just a little bit. So okay, not bad. Okay, now. Let's go in here for a minute. We'll go back to one view here and let's zoom in here. All right. Now, if you use your dolly where we scroll in, now you're going to see the parallaxing effect where things are shifting 
you know, and it's it's a neat effect, right? Let's undo, undo, undo. Okay, so what I want to do is, and I'm undoing my dolly. That's what I'm undoing here. Um, actually, I got to redo, change value. I just saw that I changed the scale there. All right, so what I'm going to do is on my camera layer, we'll hit the P key and change its position. We'll hit the first. We'll hit the uh, uh, the stopwatch, so we install a keyframe there. We'll go to the end of our movie. And by the way, I did not say this, and I failed to say this, was my movie is set up for five seconds. And if you set up longer, that's fine. It's just I want to let you know that because I didn't even think about that when I brought this in. I just sort of start working because I set that up a long time ago. But I've set this up for five seconds. Anyway, let's continue on here. And this time we're going to zoom in here. Um, we could change our position by just scaling in like this. Just as it is just as if we're doing it with, you know, the three D. And we can change multiple things here. We can go up and down here. See that? That's a nice effect there. Okay. Um now what we might want to do is bring this keyframe in a little bit more. So we'll zoom in a little quicker here. All right. No, it's got to render it, so so it's going to be a little choppy for a second here. Now, that's much smoother. Okay, so, the reason why I did that is because we could get in so far, and then here we can change, you know, our view where we're maybe looking up or something. Uh, we can also rotate, Shift-R. We can rotate... So we could rotate our camera like that. I'm just rotate, you know, maybe, maybe we rotate here like this. So let's play this now and see what this looks like. Uh-oh. You can see some of it's actually sticking out there. And that's because I rotated it without setting up a keyframe. Okay, so let's go back here. We'll undo that. All right. We'll undo that rotate. We'll bring the timeline indicator to the front here and what I want to do is let's uh, hit the stopwatches on these okay and we'll actually just keep them here actually this is where we want the keyframes to be at. so I'm just going to install another keyframe here by clicking on these two all right so now once we get to here we can actually change the rotation and it won't affect well we won't go up too much there see And I'm just playing around with this just a little bit. Okay, so watch it here. It zooms in. Nice. And then we zoom up. And then, you know, I'm just playing around to see what kind of effect we can get here with this. Because the position changes. That's nice. Okay. Uh, I like that effect. Okay, so now let's let's get in here and do some things here. We're going to add some other features in this. And let's go up here. We'll scroll this down. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to select all my layers. That's Command-A or Control-A, depending on what kind of computer you're on. And come over here to one of these arrows. And we'll close everything for the moment, okay? And then... And if you, by the way, if you need to go and see something, if you just click on a layer, hit the U key, it'll show you, it should show you, oh, it's, good. it's not showing me. Well, anyway, might be a little glitch here that I'm running into. Usually when you hit the U key, it'll show you all your, all the keyframes you put in. But I only put keyframes on this. That's why. That is why. Okay. I didn't put... My Microsoft Outlook is updating. Um, so anyway, that's why when I hit the U key on those, I did not see anything because I didn't install keyframes. I just made changes. And we can go in there and, and hit the P key and make changes more later. But let's con let, what I want to do now 
is I want to go and we'll turn off some of these layers. We're going to go all the way back to there, okay? Because I want to install a couple of things. One of the things I want to install is um, that kind of effect that I had in one of my videos. So we're going to come down to this middle stone layer first. And I am going to go to layer, new, and we're going to do a new shape layer, okay? And we're just going to get our ellipse tool and draw a circle. I'll hold our shift key if we want to. We're going to put this circle here, and then we're going to move it over just a little bit. It doesn't matter what color the circle is, because we're going to actually come over to our effects and presets and do a search for particle, PRT, and we're going to use particle world on this, okay? So I'm going to double click this, and if we play this, we get this effect, okay? Now, I've helped a couple, a couple of you guys in class with this, but for those of you who haven't played with this before, it's pretty easy. It's just there's a lot of features to this. So let's bring this out just a little bit here on the timeline. And let's go to the particle. Like over here, you should see it. Here's project. Here's the effect. Let's go to particle. So right now, the particle type is a line. We can change this to a star. So now there's stars pouring out, okay? Um, we can also change, right now they're falling. So under the physics, we want to change the gravity to zero. Let me just scroll that over to zero or type in zero there. So now they're popping out like that, okay? Now the next thing I want to do is we want to play around with the because you know if you notice here they come way out here what i want to do is i want to shorten them so i'm going to shorten the longevity so they'll actually die off sooner okay and i know it's a little hazy there but it's just waiting to render there we go and so let's see what that looks like there so they don't go out as far okay now let's come in here And then the next thing I want to play around with is we can play around with birth size. We'll make them smaller. Okay, we don't want to go down to zero, but we can go down quite a bit there. And the death size can get a little smaller. You know. Okay, so let's see what that looks like. That's better. Okay, now we're going to change its color. That's why I say you didn't have to worry about color because the color is affected by the birth color and the death color. And you can always keyframe these things too. They all have stopwatches. And But if you just make changes without doing the stopwatch, then it will do it f throughout the whole entire um, animation here. So let's come in here and we'll make this a light blue. Okay. And so that's, that's, that's not a bad effect there, okay? There's all kinds of things you can play around with this. I'm going to do a few more things here. And one of those things is I'm actually going to go to, um, hmm. let's see here. What I was thinking, and I just lost my train of thought. Oh, I know what I was going to do here. Um, as far as physics, we got explosive happening. We could change this. We can go to twirl. I'm going to hit twirly. And this is what our stars are going to do. So they're going to twirl around like that. Okay. So that's a nice effect there. And let's let's see how far out we want to bring this. We might want to change our longevity down just a little bit more. So it won't come out so far. Okay. Um... And then, I mean, there's just so many little features you can work with. We can bring our velocity down, okay? And that will slow down. I think it should slow down. We'll see here when it renders it out here. It slows them down a little bit, okay? And so we could, you know, there's, there's just a multitude of little things here we could play with, with making this look better. And But I'm going to keep going on, okay? So 
one thing we can do is, if we have this effect, we can actually duplicate it. So I'm going to make sure I'm on this layer. I'm going to hit Command, or you should do Control D, and it will duplicate it. And so now let's go up under here. And on this layer, let's go to Particle. I'm going to change the particle type. I'm going to do a faded sphere like that. And then we're going to change uh, the physics to where it's going to just twirl. Okay. And so let's see what that looks like. All right. So you see those little, those little faded spheres there. Now let's change the so death size here on those. So we'll bring those up a bit. Okay, and I'm just playing around here. It's it's hard to get everything correct in a tutorial because I'm I want to I don't want to waste so much time here. But let's continue on. We're going to do with bringing down the velocity a little bit more. Okay, I think we can go inherit velocity and bring it past into the negative. I'm just trying to slow it down there a little bit if I can. And also, one of the things that's going on is the birth rate's going on so fast. So we're going to turn down the birth rate here. You could play, you know, there's just so much you can just play with on this. And I'm not going to get it completely perfect for what I wanted, but, you know, I'll just leave it at that for the moment. Because I want to get on some other things here. So let's let's go and bring our timeline indicator back to the front here. Okay, and let's turn on these other layers now and make sure that this effect is, yeah, there we go. It's behind everything. That's exactly what I want. Okay, now, the next thing I want to play around with is I want to bring our timeline indicator to the front here, is I want to play around with lighting. So let's go up to the, the second layer here, the front stone's right layer and I'm going to go to layer new and add a um, light and what we're going to do is we're going to add an ambient light okay that's the first light we're going to add ambient light when we add it it'll make it just a little bit darker because that's the ambient color but if we go up under the light and I and light options here we can increase the intensity and go bring it all the way back up to 100. Now we can keyframe this so that when it goes in, the ambient light might drop a little bit or get brighter, depending on what we want to do here. Let's let's zoom, let's keep it there, and then let's bring up the intensity to to 140. And you can see, oh, you know, I didn't stopwatch it. I mean, I didn't add keyframes, so let's undo that. That's why we got a stopwatch on that. So let, let's put, well, we did that there, but we'll go to the here, and we'll just put another keyframe there. But let's go back to the end here, and we'll raise that, and let's just see what this looks like. So now it's getting a little brighter as we go in there. But I'm going to add another light, too. And we might change the, what we did to the ambient light there. So let's let's get in it. Let's bring the timeline indicator all the way back to the start. Now what I want to do is I'm going to install. And this, this is going to be a light. And we're going to put it um, in front of the middle stone's left layer, which is layer 15. Or behind the layer, the shape layer one, okay, um, right in that area. So let's go to layer, new, light, and I haven't saved anything either. And we need to save, so let, we'll do that next. Right after I put in this spot, we're not going to do a spotlight. Spotlights are a little hard to control. Um, I like them. I like the effect of a spotlight. But uh, for this tutorial, I thought it would be better just to put this light in here. Now let's save this. Okay. We're going to go save as. And you can put your name on it. You know. Uh, but we'll do 3D exercise. This is a 3D exercise. And make sure we put this in the right folder. Because this is 
this is my folder here for this. Okay. And like I said, you might want to put your name on it too. All right. So now what I need to do is let's go back to two views. Okay. Now this light is in front of everything. We're going to have to bring it back. So we're going to actually bring this light back here. And notice that it made those sh it made these shapes a lot darker, which is cool. I love that effect there. You know, we can bring this light down a little bit more like that. So now let's play this. And that looks pretty cool. I like that. Oh, the other thing I wanted to do is play with the clouds because there's a lot of things to adjust here. Okay, so let's go back here. I, I like what's doing there. Uh, I don't really need to change that too much, but we can go up underneath here and we got light options. And we could do cast shadows are on, good. Okay. Uh, we could do raise our darkness here. So those things in the front may be affected, I hope. That's what I was hoping it would do, but it's not, I don't see it doing it yet. Let me move this light back just a little bit more here. Okay. Part of it is the ambient light. Because if I turn off the ambient light, you'll see what I'm talking about here. There we go. See, see, this is without the ambient light being on. And you can play around with this so much. Okay, let's let's turn that off here. Let's uh let's lower our ambient light. Turn it back on here, and we'll lower our ambient light just a little bit there. Okay. Now let's come to the end here. And change the ambient lights so it'll get darker instead of lighter. And now let's w play this. And that's much better. That's much more interesting to look at. And you can just play around with that more and more. You know, I'm going to leave it like this right now because I want to go and adjust the clouds. So I've got to go down here and find my cloud layer, okay? And we'll hit the P key for this, and we'll position it. We'll just click that there, and I'm going to scroll over here. Now, the thing is, if I scroll in all the way, we're not going to be able to see where the clouds are going to go. So let's scroll maybe to here on our timeline indicator, and then let's just change the position of our clouds so they go up, okay? So that's usually what happens if you're looking at a sky. Your clouds usually are moving up if they're coming towards you, okay? Depending on which way the wind is. And we'll go uh, actually shift the clouds a little bit over this way, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this keyframe and bring it all the way over here at least. So let's play this now. And see the clouds look like they're moving. Okay, that's nice. Now, you notice that's a little choppy there, but when it rendered it out, it actually rendered it much cleaner. And that's just the preview that we're seeing this. And what I'm talking about choppy is I'm talking about the edge of this shape right here. Now, what we're going to do is we've got all this done. That's great. You could render this one out. You know, we could go to uh, add to render queue. Okay. And we'll put this out on the desktop. And hit save. Okay, we'll leave it at full scale. I'm not going to make it any smaller. You know, you can if you want to, but you know, we we'll just leave this at full scale. And we'll hit render, and hopefully this won't take too long to render. Just be patient. It's almost done. I'm going to do the next step. I'm going to do is I'm going to add another camera, and we're just going to put it right on top of the existing camera. But this takes a little while to render out because there's a lot going on there, and as you notice, look at 
the edge there, it stays pretty crisp there. You know, I went in there and did a little bit more refining because I originally painted this in Procreate. So what I did in Procreate was I enlarged these things and cleaned them up last night. And then I put them into Photoshop and shrunk them down again because because there's a difference between Photoshop and Procreate, okay? As far as scaling and rotating and all that, um, it remains a lot cleaner in Photoshop. So that's something to keep in mind if you're working in Procreate. You might want to leave, you might want to make paint things big and then scale them down in Photoshop. Um, anyway, let's continue on here. We'll turn off this camera here for the moment. And we're going to make a, and we'll click on the camera so we'll be up here. Because we're going to make a new camera above it, all right? And we'll just make a new camera here because we could change the camera. But we're going to make this into a two-node camera, okay? And this just adds another layer of complexity to this project. But on this two-node camera, we'll hit the P key and we'll change its position here. We'll hit the stopwatch and we'll move in so far. Now, the reason why the clouds are doing that right now is because the camera hasn't moved in. Because by the time we move it in, we're not going to see the clouds coming off there. So let's scale this out a little bit. And we can zoom, we can move this camera over here like this. Okay. And there are so many controls here with this camera. Let's play this. That one of the things we're going to play around with is we'll go back to the beginning here, and we're going to we're going to scroll down this. Now I'm doing this twice here so we can see all the camera options, and there's a ton of them. And I wish they would show them up here, but they don't. Okay, so one of the I mean with the camera options, there's just so many things we could do. We've got point of interest. Okay, so let's click on that so we keyframe that. Um, and the point of interest is this right here, okay? So as we scroll in here, we could change that point of interest. Okay, we can move it there, or we can go in and scroll it. And see, I want to zoom it in. Now look at that right there. It's all the way back, back to the sky layer. So, so as you see me changing this position, you know, I could change it this way. But the point of interest, we want to bring that point of interest up. And we can do that also because we want to bring it up to where that our vortex is happening, okay? Somewhere in that area there. So let's go back here. And We want to keep that point of interest somewhat in the middle there, okay? Because we're going to use depth of field next. And that's going to change things. Okay? So let's go to depth of field and we're going to turn it on. Right down here, he says depth of field. Okay? We're going to hit the. We're going to leave it on, okay? We don't need to hit stopwatch, but what we might do is change the. The focus distance, okay? So if we shorten the focus distance, things are going to get a little out of focus. And we can actually play around with this so that our focus distance will actually, and we'll just see how, see, see that moving right there? That's the focus distance. All right, so we want to bring that all the way up to where we're looking at here. Now let's go back here. I'm going to bring the timeline indicator back, okay? And let's play around with our focus distance here a little bit more. And we might want to focus more on the front there, okay? Um, you won't see too much happening in this until you render it out. But there's so many things you can play around with on this. It's just it's interesting. That's why you see, you know, you saw my two different films in the beginning there of this tutorial. Um, let's play around with the point of interest where we keep it there, but also we can change 
where we're looking on the point of interest here. So we can rotate it more over that way, okay? And so as we come over here, you know, we can change our point of interest a little bit and maybe move that up move that a little bit and the other thing we can do too is we can always play around with stuff over here I'm just playing around here let me see where we're at here yeah you can see all that look at that that's kind of cool there because it's showing everything happening over there Let, let's play this see what it looks like I think that this should show you enough you can play around with more things on this and you can watch other tutorials online as far as uh, the cameras. That's where I kind of found out about this. I went and did a Google search on what's the difference between a one, a one node and a two node camera. But anyway, uh, what you want to do is once you get this done, you want to render it out. You can render out two, your two different cameras. Okay, so you'll upload two different um, files. And, you know, have fun, play around, see what you can get out of this, and then think about what you're going to be doing for your project, okay?